This video is brought to you by our trusted graphics partner, NVIDIA. Welcome to my unboxing and first look at the Corsair Vengeance M95. So there's actually a couple of different colors available, black and white. So the black one is old, the white one is new. Other than a few key changes in terms of the hardware inside the mouse, not a lot is different from the Vengeance M90. So if you already liked the M90 or if you already have an M90, this might not be a reason to run out and grab another one. But if you aren't already using a Corsair gaming mouse, then this might be a reason to give it a closer look because they have modernized the feature somewhat and I think it's kind of cool that you can get it in different colors because there's not many companies out there that offer a wide variety of different colors. Not that I'm saying black and white is necessarily a wide variety but it's a variety. So there you have it. Oh, I guess some of the more some of the more gaming oriented guys do. Okay, well, there you go. So the finish is actually different on the white one versus the black one. So I'm going to open up both of them. They come with a two year warranty. Rather than the older mouse, which had a lower sensitivity sensor, they now feature an Avago ADNS 9800 sensor, which goes at up to 8200 DPI. Now that's not to say that very many people are actually going to get a tangible benefit from an 8200 DPI gaming mouse because most people won't unless you're running multi-monitor setups and you need to get from you know one side to the other with a small flick of your wrist you're probably going to turn the DPI down it just happens that the higher end sensors that have all those features like being able to adjust your lift distance and you know uh, automatically detecting the surface that they're running on and making adjustments and all those kinds of good things like just working well on anything they just happen to be high DPI sensors these days because high-end sensors have high-end features and have high DPI so that it's easier to sell them. All right, so the finish is actually quite different. This one is a matte soft touch finish on the top, so that's the black model, with a grippy side that has kind of a, like a very fine grit sandpaper feel to it so that you're going to be able to lift the mouse without, and same thing here on these buttons, they have a little bit of texture to them. So you're gonna be able to lift the mouse without accidentally pressing the buttons and you can also put a little bit of pressure here. So just like that. That gives you that, that grip that you need. The white model has more like, uh, so it's got the same sort of grippiness here, and it's got the same texture here. See, you can actually hear that texture, but the top of the mouse is completely smooth, kind of like a Stormtrooper armor-like finish. It'll go really well with something like a, uh, a 600T white edition case, for example. So I'm going to focus on the white one, just because the black one is very similar to the one that we've seen before. So right here, we've got uh, polyfluoroethyl tetra, whatever it is. So uh, Teflon trademark, TM, can't use that word, uh, pads on the bottom that allow it to glide around on any surface. Wouldn't have minded seeing these ones be a little bit bigger, but a great amount of the bottom of the mouse is actually covered, so they shouldn't wear out too quickly. Uh, one difference between the M95 and the M65 is that the M95 doesn't have weight adjustments, so it is a bit of a heavier mouse, and you can't really take any of the weight off of it, but I personally think that the benefit of the M95 outweighs any disadvantage it has against the M65 because I love having access to all of these extra buttons here. So you've got five, six, seven, eight, nine buttons on the side that you can reach with your thumb. I personally can probably only reach about this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. So I can probably only reach about seven of them myself. But if you had larger hands, like one of our assistants here who can step in, so that's Slick's. Uh, slicks, mitts, you can probably reach all the buttons on the side fairly easily. There you go. And that's probably more of a claw mouse for you anyway. I don't, is there a mouse that you can palm? Just okay, we'll talk about that later. Um, there's also two more buttons up here. These ones are configured to back and forward by default, so you can go back and forward in your browser or whatever else. Moving up to the top of the mouse, we find what are by default configured as back and forward buttons, as well as a DPI switcher here that has an LED indicator on the side of the mouse that tells you exactly which profile you happen to be in. Of course, you've got your left and right click as well as a middle button click giving you a ton of different functionality that you can access quickly and easily on the M95. Now they've also added second generation Corsair software support to these mice. Um, early on with the M90 and the M60 there were some complaints about the software in general. They've actually made a lot of changes to it so if you have an M90 or an M60 on the shelf right now then uh, go ahead and sort of pull it out see what you think of it. If you don't have one then you can with a lot more confidence go ahead and check out the M65 or the M95 depending on which gaming style you
you want. This cord's about six feet long, so you can probably approximately see how long it is like that, or about uh, one Linus wingspan plus about six inches or about 15 centimeters. And I think that pretty much wraps it up. So thank you for checking out my unboxing and first look at the Corsair M95. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos. Thanks for watching. This video was edited on a workstation powered by Kingston Memory.